So now that we've got our rod bearings all installed, we've completed the steps that we mentioned on the first rod. We've checked our big end size, we've torqued our main our rod bolts down to specification and verified it was round. Then we checked our shells, uh, we went ahead and we checked the uh, pin bore and pin clearance on the rod itself. And now we're just going to repeat those steps on all the rods here moving forward. Uh, we've measured our crankshaft. Uh, rod journals and now we're going to go to each one. We're going to set the micrometer to the uh, dimension of the rod and then we're going to measure each rod and see which clearance uh, is going to be better suited for that journal and then we'll match our rods for each journal um, based on clearance. Okay, so now that we're going to be moving on to uh, verifications and checks on our pistons, um, we're going to check the pins here first. I'm just going to go through all of them, uh, make sure they're the same size or within a couple tenths at least, and then we will verify the clearances to each piston, and then again, just like the rods, we'll match them appropriately to the uh, best set clearance on the piston itself. And then once we've done that, we'll move on to checking our piston to wall clearance from the piston itself into the block. So now that we've measured our piston pins, um, they were relatively the same uh, within one tenth of each other. So I'm going to assume um, for now without having measured that they're probably going to fit in any piston I want them to fit into, um, but we're going to go ahead, we're going to set our micrometer to the dimension of the piston pin and then we're going to take our smaller dial bore, dial bore gauge and then uh, check our clearances on each piston. Alright, so now that we have uh, uh, our uh, dial bore gauge set. Um, you can see here there's a bit of an oil groove inside the CP piston so what we're going to do is we're just going to measure just like the 26 block how it has an oil groove. We're going to measure on one side then the other and then we're going to check 90 degrees and then we're going to verify that it's uh, one thou is what we'd like to see um, plus or minus uh, a tenth is okay and then uh, once we find our results here we'll play around with the piston pins. So we're measuring just about a thou clearance on the inner portion of the oil groove. I'm going to move to the outer portion now. And we're getting about a thou as well. Okay, and then we're going to check at 90 degrees. Remember to keep in mind that oil groove is there, so you're going to want to go a little bit above it. And we're about 9 tenths there, give or take. Okay, now that we've verified our piston pin bore uh, clearances, we've checked both sides. We've checked horizontally, vertically. Uh, we're going to move on now to check our piston to uh, uh, wall clearance. Uh, that is measured at the half inch from the bottom of the piston skirt, 90 degrees to the piston pin on the CP piston. Um, other manufacturers may suggest different location for measuring these. Um, this is the area where the piston will um, grow and contact the cylinder wall, so this is why this is critical. Um, the piston dome itself um, from the bottom ring land up is actually a little bit smaller than the skirt itself so it will not end up contacting the cylinder wall unless you run into issues. We're going to make sure our piston to wall clearance is to specification. Uh, for this job we're looking around three and a half to four thou and uh, that is what we asked the machine shop to do so we're going to verify here now and uh, see what they came up with. So we're going to measure our piston to wall clearance. We're going to do cylinder one. Um, these pistons were machined to fit each individual cylinder um, so I'm assuming there's going to be some sort of small variance between them um, that required that. Um, so first thing you're going to want to do, we haven't touched on it in a while so I'm going to run through it again, is you're going to always want to zero your micrometer, especially for such a large item like this. Um, the margin for error increases. Okay, now that we have our micrometer zeroed, we're going to take our number one piston and we're going to go the half inch from the bottom of the piston skirt, 90 degrees to the piston pin. So I like to measure, grab a measurement, come right off, and then grab it again, 
just to make sure you're consistently measuring it. 40265. 40260. Once you're happy with your measurements and it was a consistent measurement multiple times um, and you get the same result, we're going to go ahead now and we're going to um, set our micrometer to that uh, dimension and then we're going to set our bore gauge to fit inside of here just like we've been doing and everything else um, and then check our piston and wall clearance. Okay so now that we've set our dial bore gauge uh, to the dimension of the OD of the piston we're going to drop it in the cylinder now um, make sure your cylinder walls are still clean um, and then we'll see what our dimension is. Getting about three and a half thou as expected a little bit larger the closer you get to the top but still within specification. Piston to wall clearance is always measured 90 degrees to the piston pin um, so you're not going to measure piston clearance this way even though you're going to want to check out around a taper this way but anywhere that the skirt contacts is where you're going to want to check your clearances because as the piston grows it will tighten up that clearance. So once you've done that with the first piston uh, you can go ahead and you can carry on with the rest of them. Uh, I do recommend you measure all the pistons, record your dimensions, and then you can set your uh, micrometer to that dimension again, and then you can zero it and then do them all at the same time just to verify your clearances. Um, there's lots of ways to do this. Sometimes piston manufacturers are so precise, these are always uh, or almost always exactly the same. Um, CP is pretty good for that. Um, so this probably is a, a minor variance that we have accounted for and uh, the machine shop has uh, machined the pistons to fit in certain uh, bores. Um, so once we go ahead and we measure them all, we're gonna verify if that's true, and then we will select which hole they go into and then match them to the correct rod, um, and then we will start the assembly. So now that we have our piston pin verification done, we're gonna move on and we're gonna check our uh, piston ring clearances. Um, almost always have to set these unless you're putting together a factory engine. Um, they don't come out of the box uh, in the clearances that you want. Typically they're a little bit smaller, that way you have room to set it to how you want to set it. If you're in an engine this far, you probably already know what the piston rings do um, or what these are. Um, there's uh, the top one here is the compression ring, um, primary compression ring. This one is usually the strongest. Um, it allows uh, the cylinder to seal, obviously, and uh, it also um, dissipates heat from the top of the piston into the cylinder wall as well. Um, the second one is the second compression ring and that oil, oil scraper ring. Um, some of them are designed uh, to uh, scrape oil primarily off the cylinder wall. Um, this one does have an oil scraper on it, um, but this is the, uh, the secondary compression ring that is going to provide the same function as the first one, um, but a little bit of a softer material and uh, not as uh, durable. Uh, the third ring is just going to be your oil control ring. Um, this pretty much controls how much oil um, gets up past it and into the compression rings. You want um, some oil there but not too much oil. And then uh, this also allows and guides oil down to the piston pin and uh, into the crankcase. Okay, so we're going to go through uh, each ring and uh, what the clearance is usually recommended. Um, CP is, is very helpful just like any piston ring manufacturer and they will provide you with what they would suggest for uh, street application for a turbo application and for a nitrous application. So for our first ring uh, we're going to set the clearances. Um, this is good for a street application clearance. Um, we typically run uh, what CP recommends for a street to high uh, performance um, which is basically your bore um, times 0 0.0045 um, and that usually lands you around on this one at least um, around 15. Um, we like to open it up a little bit just to give you a little bit more of uh, uh, leeway if you do have high cylinder temperatures. Um, so we're going to set this one up. We're going to be 0.016. It should give us good ring sealing, um, not excessive blow by or none at all. And it should also be able to allow the rings to grow, the cylinder to heat and expel heat um, without having any sort of ring budding issues that can cause the uh, rings to bind in the cylinder and damage your piston and uh, cylinder walls and the ring itself. CP recommends four to eight thou uh, additional clearance. Um, we're going to run um, eight thou more. Um, so we're going to run the second ring here at uh, 0 .00, 0 0.024, sorry. 
And then for the oil control ring, you're just gonna have a minimum clearance, um, which is 0.015 typically. Um, when you're uh, measuring these, you can measure them together, you can measure them separately, whatever works. You just wanna make sure that they're not gonna be too snug. This won't see as much heat as the top two will, so it's very unlikely that you'll ever need to clearance these ones, but do always verify them, never assume. And then this last one here does not have any clearancing. Um, it does not physically touch the cylinder wall itself. It does have a bit of a offset from the other two oil rings that go around it. So this one typically you just want to make sure that it fits cleanly. Um, there's no binding when it's in the maximum position in the cylinder wall, um, but it will butt up against each other uh, when you go to install it in the piston or in the, in the cylinder. And uh, very rarely would it ever actually cause too much resistance in the cylinder. So to start off, we're just going to uh, set the piston ring clearance on the first one. Um, I typically like to put them in at a 90 degree angle so you don't have any resistance going in. And then I like to flip it down. But once you have your piston ring in there, uh, one thing to note is we do have the torque plate on. Um, I do recommend using the torque plate and installing any um, high tension torque. Uh, hardware that uh, just like in the other aspects of the engine building you want it to be as close to operating um, conditions as possible um, so we got all of our hardware in here and it's going to put the cylinder exactly how it would be when it's torqued down and then we're going to square it to the cylinder um, I typically recommend you put it in the largest or the tightest portion of the cylinder because that's going to be where it's going to be the smallest clearance usually it's around the center to the top of the cylinder so I typically like to do about one to two inches from the top and I like to zero it out I use this um, old RB26 piston that uh, helps me square it up to the top of the cylinder. Um, so when you are checking your piston ring gap, I recommend always putting the ring in the cylinder that it's going to live in. Um, again, there's usually a slight variance across all the cylinders, just like we've said with the pistons here already. Um, if there's a slight variance across it, you're going to want to put the ring in the cylinder it's going to live in. Um, that just gives you that extra step of precision. Um, some people put all the rings in one, in one cylinder and then, you know, distribute. Um, but if you're trying to be precise and accurate, I uh, definitely recommend putting it in the bore. Um, there is a lot of uh, argument about where to put it in the bore, whether, you know, one inch right at the top, right at the bottom. Um, typically, you're going to want to put it um, anywhere in that range just because the piston is going to be moving within that range. You obviously don't want to go to the very bottom the piston will never pass through that very bottom of the cylinder so somewhere where it's going to live in the in the stroke of the of the piston itself is going to be where you're going to have the best results okay so right in here you're going to see your piston ring gap um, this is rarely going to be what you um, want it to be when you first put it in there we got our feeler blade here um, this is going to be our what our what we want our final um, specification to be 0 0.016 um, so obviously right off the bat that is already too tight so we're gonna to have to take this off and run it through the uh, ring filer and then we'll reinstall the bore. Okay, so now we got our ring out of the cylinder bore. Um, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna file a little bit off at a time. Um, it's very important that you don't go too far. Obviously you don't wanna end up with a, a ring gap that's obscene. Um, so we have our ring uh, tool here set up to fit this size of ring. Um, it basically supports the ring at the back and allows you to square it up to the actual blade itself. This only cuts on one side um, to kind of give you more of a, of a controlled uh, cut. But uh, what I usually typically do is count the amount of rotations I do on each side, put it back in the bore, um, check and see what our clearance is, if any change has been made, um, reduce the amount of cuts until I get to the clearance I want. So I typically start anywhere from 10 to 12 rotations per side. So once you finish cutting your rings, um, there's sometimes a little bit of a, a sharp edges. So anywhere you've kind of cut on the on the trailing side, you're going to have a little bit of a raised edge. Um, and then obviously on the on the tips here, you're going to want to make sure there's no um, loose debris or anything like that. So I typically just run a file, just a quick couple passes. You can kind of feel with your finger if it's gone away or if it's there at all. Um, and then on the back side, the trailing side, just making sure that's kind of a chamfered edge, so you don't end up with any. Um, hard material poking out that can damage the uh, either the piston when this is sitting inside the piston or the cylinder wall. Um, so when you do a couple of passes just make sure it's cleaned up. Mostly the primary edge is going to be the part that's touching the cylinder wall while you're measuring it. Um, so now we're going to go ahead we're going to take the cut ring that we just did and put it back in the cylinder and see what our clearance is. Okay so now that we have the um, 
ring back in the bore. We're gonna take our feeler blade, same one, and we're just gonna see what we have for clearance. If we're lucky, it'll be perfect. So what you want is basically to have to force the feeler blade in there slightly and then have a bit of grab. And that seems to be what we have here. Um, feeler blades are kind of a thing that you have to learn to feel. Um, you obviously don't want to have any sort of play, but you do want to have a bit of resistance so you kind of get a clean contact on both sides of the blade so you know it's a good measurement. Okay, so once you know that your uh, ring gap is good, you can go ahead, you can do a little bit of a final file. Um, one thing to check when you do the ring gap, um, you can kind of squeeze it together. Put this down. You kind of squeeze it together, make sure they're square. Um, it's not the end of the world if they're not totally perfectly square, but uh, it does add for a little bit level of, uh, of consistency to make sure that you end up with a square cut. Um, if it's at an angle or you've cut it at a, a total angle, I don't recommend reusing that ring. You recommend or you should always replace that ring if you do happen to cut it too large. Um, you know, maybe one or two thou is okay, but if you end up with, you know, five, six thou or more, um, or the, the gap is, is massive, um, and you, you find that you have overfiled, um, I always recommend replacing the ring. Don't, don't try and just reuse it and, uh, ignore it. It, uh, it will be a problem. It's not going to go away. Um, especially for something like this is pretty critical. Um, you're not going to have a good time if you, uh, decide to, uh, reinstall that or go to install that ring still. Again, you're just going to want to make sure that there's no loose burrs on any of the edges here. And once you've confirmed that, um, you've completed your first compression ring and you can go ahead and put it back. And then we're going to move on to the next ring. Okay, so now that you've finished up the, the first one, you can move on to the second one here. The second one is going to be the exact same process. You're just going to have a larger clearance. Um, we're going to use our piston ring pusher again. Get her squared up. Now for the second ring, um, they do from factory uh, make the gap slightly larger because they know that's what you're going to set it to anyways. Um, this one is a little bit softer so when you do go to file it, definitely recommend less um, filing to start because you will remove material way faster on this ring. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to grab our .024 feeler blade and we're going to be lucky today because that is what the minimum clearance is already. No filing required. Okay, so since the uh, ring in the bore comes out to the 0 0.024 that we were uh, shooting for anyways, um, that's a lucky thing to have. Um, if we were going for say 0 0.026 or larger, or say we we're gonna run 0 0.018 um, for the uh, first ring, um, you might have to add a couple thou to this one um, in order to match that 0 0.04 or 0 0.004 to 0 0.008 thou of uh, clearance. Um, but uh, since this is gonna be sitting right where we want it to sit, we can leave this one, no necessary, no need to file it down or anything like that to uh, clean up the edges. Maybe check them just to be sure, but typically these are okay. Um, so next up, we're gonna do our oil rings here. They can be done together if you want to. Um, I do recommend kind of just doing one at a time just so you don't have to uh, struggle too much. Um, these have way less tension in the cylinder, so they may or may not stay um, exactly where you want them to stay. So now that you have your oil ring inside of the uh, cylinder block, uh, again, CP recommends uh, minimum 0 0.015. So if you select your 0 0.015, um, you just want to throw that in there and make sure 100% of the time you're totally fine. Um, I've never had one of these ever be too tight. Um, they don't recommend you file them anyways, but I mean, maybe you come up with, if, honestly, if you get uh, one that's too tight, I'd probably contact CP or whoever the manufacturer is and say, hey, these rings are incorrect. Um, so we're just gonna verify minimum 0 0.015, which is what we have. So that one's good. Move on to the next one. And that one's also good. Perfect. Okay, so that's one set of rings down. We're gonna repeat the same process for the rest of them. So since we're on the topic of uh, piston ring clearances and, and checking, um, this is a tool from Nitto they make that uh, will square the ring into the bore. Um, the one downfall of this tool here 
is that uh, you cannot have your torque plate installed, um, which is uh, a drawback for me. I prefer to have the torque plate installed, so I do not use these. Um, on engines that do not require you to have a torque plate on, the, the deck surface doesn't manipulate the cylinder bore. This is a perfect tool for that. Um, but for this reason, I use this and just square it in the bore, hit it twice, um, measurement if you're unsure, and then uh, check your clearances. Okay, so now that we have our uh, rod bearing clearances measured, we have our piston pin to rod measurements um, completed. We've measured our pin to piston clearances. We've gapped our rings. Um, I've boxed them into each individual cylinder. Um, so after I've cut them, I just put them back in the box, numbered it. Um, so now we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna do our final clean. Um, so we're gonna take apart the rod, blow the cap apart. We're gonna clean everything, put it back where it was. Uh, we're going to take our uh, pistons here that have a still a little bit of debris in here from machining and we're going to clean them up. Uh, we're going to clean the piston pin. Um, we're going to fit our pin clips into the pistons and then install the rod to the piston itself. And then we'll move on to installing the rings to the pistons themselves. But then we're going to go ahead, we're going to take the torque plate off and we'll start installing the assemblies into the block.